World War II German interrogator Hans Scharf was famous for his ability to get Allied soldiers to open up and reveal both their deepest, darkest personal secrets as well as their deepest, darkest secrets regarding their military. Now, the way that he was able to get these Allied soldiers to open up to him was by relying on soft interrogation techniques. Unlike other Nazi interrogators at this time, he never tortured, laid a hand on, or even raised his voice while interrogating the prisoners, but rather acted more like a father-like figure to such prisoners in order to get them to open up to him and reveal exactly what he was manipulating them to do so. Now, in today's speech, we will see how the same methods that were used by Hans Scharf in World War II in order to get people to open up to him and trust him are very similar to the methods that one needs to use when conducting a negotiation or a mediation between two conflicting parties. So we will take a look at various methods and techniques regarding how to manipulate one's body language as well as one's tone of voice in order to elicit such responses out of people when you're dealing with conflict between both parties. And the following techniques presented to you, I have used myself personally as a salesman, one working at Aero Postel, and have taught others on how to better sell the product to customers and understand and have empathy from where they're coming from. And these methods and techniques can be applied to both your professional and personal life in order to help you better establish rapport credibility, and trust with others. The first area that we will go over is body language. Now, body language actually compromises 55% of all nonverbal communication. Now, this statistic was reported by a February 14, 2007 article provided by yahoofinance.com in which Business Week was able to supply information on how important body language was when conducting business with others. And we can also take a look at Greg Hartley, who wrote the book How to Spot a Liar, in which he states that you can have a tremendous ability to control a situation by understanding the body language of the participants involved, including yourself. And first, we can take actually a look at facial expressions on one one smiles. And it's stated, according to abc.net, that an unconscious smile is a genuine smile, and that ingenuine smiles are created by artificial conscious effort. Additionally, we have to ask ourselves, what participant in a mediation negotiation, how are we able to tell when people are deceiving us? Well, I will go over a couple of techniques that was reported by Greg Hartley in his book, How to Spot a Liar, in order to tell when people are deceiving you. And one, he, one technique he suggests is a test in which you ask repetitive questions about situations that the person is in that did not cause them any stress, such as what they did as a child, what they did last weekend, how they liked it, how they felt about it. He says you ask these generic and vague general questions that often people feel no stress about. You can begin to do something called baseline them. And while you're asking these questions, you baseline them, meaning you begin to observe the familiar patterns of behavior and facial expressions when they're not under stress. He says, after you've done this, you begin asking questions that elicit stress internally within them. Because the questions that you ask are designed to create strong emotions, such as what they felt guilty about something, or how they feel about the current conflict that they're in. And then, since you've already baseline them, you can now see the change in their behavior in response while they're feeling stress. Now, this ability to become familiar with their baseline body language is very important in negotiation and mediation. Additionally, I can tell you that as a salesman, when you notice someone changing their facial expression when showing them a particular product, that it immediately gives you a sign that they do not want the product. Despite what they may say, their facial expression and body language says something completely different. Additionally, when applied to mediation, we can see that when you're in caucus with a party, this is an ideal time to begin baselining them. Because since you are alone with the individual, they will feel more comfortable at opening up to you. And after you've previously baselined them, 
how they are when they are comfortable, when discussing stressful situations, you can begin to see how they respond. And when you're outside of caucus, since you've already baselined them, you can see as when conflict arises between them and the other party, how they respond and when they might be lying. And having such knowledge is invaluable when trying to resolve the conflict between two parties that may be genuine or may be trying to deceive each other. And we can learn from Hans Frank, Hans Sharp, when he states it is important to dislike trust in order to get people to open up to you. But additionally, we can take a look at the importance of manipulating your tone of voice, which according to the previously cited Yahoo Finance article provided by business, information from Business Week, states that this 38% of communication from tone of voice is very important in building the pro of others. And we can actually see this from a sales perspective. That when you have someone coming in to your store to purchase a product, one of the best ways to begin to establish rapport with them is to notice what is their tone of voice, what is the emotion that is going on. And by understanding their emotions, you can match this emotion. And then by changing your tone of voice, you can make them feel alternate emotions that allows them to feel more comfortable when purchasing a product. According to Greg Hartley, he takes it one step farther. And says so that in addition to your tone of voice, you can actually match their breathing cadence in order to further build comfort with the people that you talk to. However, to apply this to mediation, we can see that when you actually in caucus with a person, a person's tone of voice will often change than when they're with the conflicting party. Because when they're with the conflicting party, they may be trying to save face or even reframe an issue in order to allow themselves to be perceived as in a stronger position. However, when in caucus, they're more vulnerable and they are more likely to open up to you and reveal their genuine tone of voice, which would allow you to understand where they are coming, where, not only where they are coming from, but also how they feel. Now, when outside of caucus, your tone of voice is just as important as it was in caucus, because you also have to maintain credibility, strength, and power in your ability to resolve conflict. We're taking a look at back at today's methods in order to establish rapport and trust. We can see the importance of body language, something that's overlooked by many salesmen, negotiators, mediators, and people from all facets of life. Because people's body language is 60 to 55 percent of what someone is trying to communicate, and often reveals emotions and truths that their words do not express. But additionally, we can see the importance of being able to understand the importance of your tone of voice as well as the other party's tone of voice because this is what expresses emotions and how they're truly feeling. Now, unlike Hans Sharp, we are not conducting interrogations of people that we are conducting mediations and negotiations with. However, the methods and techniques he used to allow people to feel comfortable in revealing information to him is very similar to what allows you to be a successful mediator and negotiator today.